Ever notice how tough it is to get someone to change their mind, even when they're like totally wrong? Oh yeah. It's kind of wild, right? It is. Turns out there's a reason for that. It's this thing called confirmation bias. Yeah, confirmation bias. And get this, it messes with our money too. Today, we're diving deep into how this sneaky bias affects our investments. It's true, and we're gonna see if AI can maybe help us out. Yeah, like, can artificial intelligence save us from ourselves? Who knows? It's a big question. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. It is a big question. You know, you're right. It's really hard to shake off those deeply held beliefs we have. Yeah. Confirmation bias. It's like this trick. It makes us look for information that just backs up what we already think. It's like we're cherry picking the evidence to fit our narrative. Exactly. Even if it means ignoring the stuff that says we're wrong. It's like those folks way back when who were convinced that the Earth was the center of the universe. Oh, yeah. yeah. They saw the sun rise and set every day. Seemed like it was all revolving around them. Right. That was all the proof they needed. Exactly. Their world made sense based on what they were choosing to see. Exactly. It took, like, what, new technology, a whole revolution in science to challenge those old beliefs. Yeah, to make them see things from a different perspective. So are you saying the same stubborn bias is messing with our money? That's what I'm saying. Wow. Okay, so instead of planets and stars, we're talking stocks and bonds. Exactly. Imagine that same stubbornness, but in your investment portfolio. Not always a good mix. Okay, so confirmation bias could be the reason some investors stick with strategies that just aren't working. It's definitely a factor. Like, they're so focused on proving themselves right, they miss the signs that things are going south. It happens more often than you think, especially in finance where things move so fast. Yeah, that can be a costly mistake. It can be. But here's where it gets interesting. This is where machine learning might be a real game changer. Okay, I'm listening. Less human bias, more data-driven decisions. Tell me more. That's the idea. You see, machine learning is really good at spotting patterns, finding connections in huge amounts of data, things our brains might completely miss. Right, we're talking about computers processing information on a whole other level. Exactly. It's like having, you know, a completely unbiased assistant who just crunches numbers all day looking for those hidden opportunities. Mm. So less gut feeling, more data crunching. But how do we know this leads to better investments? We're talking about real money here. You're right to be cautious. Let's look at an example. This QuantConnect research paper we're diving into, it explores using machine learning to revamp the classic 60-40 portfolio. Ah, the 60-40, a classic. 60% stocks for growth, 40% bonds for stability. Yep, a tale as old as time, right? (laughs) But what if it's time for an upgrade? That's what I'm wondering. You're saying this classic approach might be a little outdated? It might be. The 60-40 portfolio, it's based on the idea that stocks and bonds work kind of opposite each other. Yeah, one goes up, the other tends to go down, creates a balance. Exactly. But recent events, especially since the pandemic, have really challenged that. So what happens when those old, reliable correlations start to fall apart? That's where the AI comes in. Exactly. This research paper, it uses machine learning to find new assets to add to the mix. Oh, interesting. To create a portfolio that can roll with the punches a little better. Right. It's like using AI to find those missing pieces of the puzzle that traditional strategies just don't see. This is fascinating. So how does the machine learning do it? How does it choose what goes into this reimagined portfolio? Well, they use a model, a decision tree regression model. Okay. Think of it kind of like a choose your own adventure book, but for investments. I like it. The algorithm looks at various economic indicators. One being the VIX, which measures market volatility. Right, the VIX, sometimes called the market's fear gauge. Exactly. High volatility often means investors are feeling a little skittish. Makes sense. They also factor in the yield spread. The what? The yield spread. It's the difference between short-term and long-term interest rates. It gives a clue about where the economy might be headed. 
So it's not just about how the market is feeling right now. It's looking at the bigger economic picture, too. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Don't leave me in suspense. What other economic clues is this AI investor using? Right. Right. Of course. We can't forget about interest rates. Ah, uh, yes. Interest rates. Good old interest rates. The big one. They have a huge impact on borrowing, lending, you know, all those investment decisions. Absolutely. The whole shebang. Exactly. So all these data points, they all feed into that decision tree. Right. Guiding the AI, making sure it's making good choices. Guiding it towards those, hopefully, you know, lucrative investments. Okay. So it's like having an army of super smart analysts crunching numbers day and night. But instead, it's this elegant algorithm, right? Uh, right. Just cutting through all the noise, finding those hidden signals. Precisely. But it's still working within the rules, right? It's not like going rogue and gambling on the stock market. You got it. You're catching on quickly. It rebalances the portfolio every month. Okay. But always within certain parameters, so it's not going crazy. Okay, good, good. Like, let's say, you know, the data is saying Bitcoin's going to be big this month. Okay, yeah. The algorithm might increase that allocation, but... It's not going to go all in on Bitcoin. Wait, back up, back up. Bitcoin. So this AI is like gabbling in crypto. It could. That's a pretty big departure from the old 60-40, right? It is. It's shaking things up a bit. This is really interesting. But tell me, how did this AI portfolio actually do? Did it actually make money? That's the million dollar question, right? It is the million dollar question. And according to their research, the answer is yes. No kidding. Okay, so between 2017 and 2024, what are we talking about here? They were looking at that time period and the AI portfolio, it got a sharp ratio of 0.794. A sharp ratio of what? 0.794. Okay, okay. So for those of us who don't speak fluent finance, what exactly does that mean? Right, of course. Think of the sharp ratio as a way to measure risk and return. Okay. It tells you like how much return you're getting for the risk you're taking. Got it. Higher sharp ratio, generally a good thing. So higher is better. Got exactly. It. So 0.794, that's the AI portfolio. How does that compare to just, say, putting your money in the S&P 500? It's a great question. The good old buy and hold SPY strategy. During the same time frame, it had a sharp ratio of 0.564. Okay, so significantly less than the AI portfolio. That's right. Meaning the AI, it outperformed the market considering that risk, of course. That's really impressive. And I'm sure the researchers didn't just stop there, right? They ran this thing through the ringer. They did. They tested it a bunch of different ways just to be sure. Smart. They wanted to make sure their strategy was solid, you know? So they changed the look back period. Meaning what? Say? The look back period. Yeah. It basically means how far back in time the algorithm looked at the data. So like, are we talking about a year's worth of data, five years, 10 years? Exactly. They wanted to see if the AI needed a long history of information or if it could adapt to a shorter time frame. you know? Interesting. Be flexible. So what else did they tinker with? They also adjusted how much Bitcoin the AI could have in the portfolio. Hold on. They gave the AI the keys to the Bitcoin kingdom. That's kind of risky, right? It can be. Bitcoin can be all over the place. That's an understatement. So what happened? What did they find when they gave the AI a little more Bitcoin to play with? So they let the AI dip its toes into the crypto waters. And what happened? Well, they found that the more Bitcoin they let the AI use, the better the portfolio performed overall. Really? The more Bitcoin, the better the returns. Yeah, they saw a higher sharp ratio when they allowed for a bigger potential allocation to Bitcoin. And it didn't seem to matter how long they looked back at the data. The pattern held up. Wow, that's really interesting. It's like the AI figured out how to make Bitcoin work for it. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And this is with an asset that a lot of people are still on the fence about, right? I mean, Bitcoin has its risks. Everyone knows that. But this research suggests that maybe, just maybe, there's a way to make it work as part of a balanced portfolio. Right, right. Got to diversify. Exactly. Yeah. But got to add the usual disclaimer here. This is just one research paper. Past performance isn't a guarantee of future success. Of course, of course. We're not giving investment advice here, folks. But it is fascinating to see how this AI performed compared to those more traditional strategies, outperforming the market, even dabbling in Bitcoin. It really gets you thinking, right? It really does. I think it speaks to a much bigger shift that's happening in finance. It's not about robots taking over, mm -hmm. right? But it is about recognizing that as humans, we've got our own biases, our own blind spots. But technology, it offers this really powerful way to overcome those limitations, to see the things we miss. It's like having an AI co-pilot to guide us through the market, help us make smarter decisions. But, you know, for the average person listening to this, it can all seem a bit overwhelming, right? 
Where do you even start with all this AI stuff? You know, I think it starts with just being curious. Ask yourself, what do I believe about investing? Am I stuck in my ways, clinging to old strategies that maybe aren't working so well anymore? Like those sacred cows we all have. Exactly. And then, you know, get out there and explore what's available. There's some really great resources and tools out there now, AI-powered platforms designed to help investors of all levels. Yeah, it's like upgrading your investing toolkit for the digital age. This deep dive has been eye-opening, I've got to say. It's really got me thinking about the future of investing and how machine learning, how AI could change the game. It's not just about crunching numbers. It's about challenging our assumptions, right? It's about making smarter decisions. You got it. And who knows what other exciting applications for AI are just around the corner. We're just getting started, really. One thing's for sure, the future of investing is looking pretty intelligent. Could agree more. Well, thanks for taking this deep dive with us. It's been a fascinating conversation. Until next time. My pleasure.